When Tohu Wines was launched in 1998, it was the world's first Māori-owned wine company. Now it has its own vineyards, a winery, a case of industry awards for its wines and a commitment to conserving the environment for future generations. We started back in 1998 with contract growers, made a very small couple of thousand cases of Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc and then have kind of grown from there into owning our own vineyards, developing our own vineyards, sourcing fruit from a bunch of different growers and kind of different sources around Marlborough, Nelson, Gisborne, Hawke's Bay, all across New Zealand really. And as of about three years ago, we purchased a winery as well. So we're now kind of fully in control of that whole process from growing the grapes through making the wine with our own staff and uh, right through to bottling for us. The concept of Tohu being started as a wine company was to take the culture around the world as well. So it was seen as a way to export Māori culture and to be a bit of a shining example of a successful indigenous business. One of our biggest challenges with developing our own identity with our wine would be getting control over the process and trying to differentiate ourselves from other, particularly Marlborough wine producers, you know. So we've really tried a few kind of value-added things, I suppose, which would be our branding and pushing ourselves as a Māori company. Also our single vineyard approach, so all of our Tohu wines are single vineyard wines, so we've really tried to kind of differentiate ourselves by focusing on what we think are very special vineyards, like our Awateri vineyard. We've tried to separate yourselves from the masses through that approach and through, you know, a, a high quality approach, I guess. Sustainability is a big factor in all wine producers in New Zealand, you know, we're all pretty much, well, 90 odd percent of us are part of sustainable wine growing New Zealand, so that's kind of just a baseline for us. Where we're looking into the future is into organics, you know, we're not, um, we don't have any claims at the moment to be organically certified or really producing organic wine from organic grapes. We are growing organic grapes and we're kind of in a transition period really while we try and get our head around some of the challenges with it, particularly as regards things like bronze beetle, um, disease control and uh, yeah, it's mostly around disease and kind of controlling your pests basically. This is the Awatiri vineyard, one of three vineyards that we have. This is the upper Awatiri, 220 metres above sea level. 120 hectares of land area, of which 72 is planted in grapes. We've got about 13 hectares that's under organic uh, management and we're going into our fourth season. Um, so we have five, of that five hectares is Savion Blanc and the balance is Pinot Noir. We also grow some Riesling up here and uh, a little bit of Chardonnay. So there's a number of challenges, our altitude, we have the risk of frost up here. We're one of several sites that are monitored by plant and food research. Our grown degree days is one of the lowest out of those other sites. The distance from Blenheim um, can be a challenge and the winds can be deceptively quite strong up here as well. We have two systems of frost protection. The pond uh, that we've constructed it was we could only build one big enough to cover roughly about 50 hectares and then the balancing 20 hectares is covered by four wind machines. Cultural values fit in with organic philosophy I guess. Some things that people may not see that's so obvious is that and just being Māori myself just the way that we uh, deal with people it's about having positive relationships being good hosts about being kind to people. Uh, we practice or do certain karakia uh, at, during matariki before we harvest. We have a karakia. Um, at some meetings, depending on the level of those meetings, we'll have karakia, we have waiata. It's, it's, you don't have to, but it's there, and we're just finding that staff are actually picking up on that. So they are thinking, you know, how Māori people think, and our company being a Māori-owned company, three and a half thousand, four thousand shareholders, it's important to them that we recognise that, you know, those values and that we practise and observe what they do. Grass grub is a major issue for us with extending our organics further to the whole vineyard. So currently in the industry an insecticide called karate is used and that's pretty indiscriminate against even beneficial insects. So we've got a three year research program going with the bioprotection unit down at Lincoln University, PhD student from Chile. He's already 13 months into a three year project, 20 months to go. So he's looking at the, the habitats of them, what they do. He's been up here filming at night time during the flight seasons, looking at the moon phases, the weather, the soil temperatures. And we've been trying different biological products 
to see if we can mitigate or minimise the not only the, uh, the damage by the beetles, but can we disturb the larvae and um, the overwintering period. I'm studying the dynamics of brown beetle. It is an endemic uh, pest in New Zealand, and the larvae of this insect they feed on the roots of the grass. But here, the damage is not caused by the larvae, it's caused by the adults that fly from the heathlands and maybe as well from the vineyard uh, that is in front of this one into the vine plants. And they land on the leaves, they mate, and they feed there, and after that they drop into the ground. The beetles eat the leaves, but in addition, they eat the shoots and the inflorescences of the plants. So in some cases, you can have around 15 and 20% losses in the vineyard block in terms of uh, plant material. So far, we're using different approaches. The first is try to understand the behavior. But in addition, we tried last season some feeding deterrents are based on kaolin, that is a clay, type of clay, and the other one is diatomaceous earth, this is the time of uh, silicon, diatom earth. So we spray that on plants and we found that that decreases between 30 and 40 percent of the damage when you compare that with plants that were not spraying. And the other approach is to use miscanthus. Miscanthus is a hybrid grass that is usually used for biofuel. The advantage of that is that can grow easily in two years, about four meters. So if that's the case, maybe we can intercept the beetles' flying pathways and maybe the beetles can stay in the miscanthus instead of going to the vineyard. And the last approach is to use mussel shells. As you can see there, we applied some mussel shells in the undervine, trying to stop the beetles that could eventually lay eggs there to lay the eggs. We did that and we found that the, actually by putting the mussel shells in the undervine, we reduced by 69% the number of beetles that land on those plants. So that's amazing. <laughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.